Hey guys, I'm Dustin and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the Blackmagic Pocket 4K cinema camera. Now, if you've come to this video just to see some test footage, that's not what this is about. This video is in particularly about things you need to know before you purchase the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K. And from here on out, we're gonna be just calling it the Pocket 4K. It's a lot easier to say it in that way. Also, if you haven't done so yet, definitely consider subscribing if you're into tech reviews and more videos of the Blackmagic Pocket 4K. I'll be getting more videos about this uh, as soon as I can. Really, I've been really spending a lot of time with just using it, looking at the uh, forums and the Facebook pages and just reading and learning as much as I can about this camera as well as the community. There's a lot of things that you have to learn uh, as far as filmmaking goes when you go into this camera. I'm kind of go over a few things for me coming from a DSLR that I had to learn coming to this camera. So keep in mind, I am a Canon user. I've been using Canon cameras for about four years now. Uh, I love the autofocus that's built into these, starting with the 70D, the 80D, and the Kios, and the Canon EOS M50, which I'm recording with now, in 4K, I might add. I'm trying out the 4K to see how it looks. And one of the biggest things that I've learned from coming from Canon cameras is that this camera in particular does not have any continuous autofocus, meaning that you have no capability to keep your object in, fo in focus automatically whenever on, they're on the go or on the move like I am right here. I actually have face tracking on this camera. So it's continually tracking my face and keeping my face in focus. This camera does not have that option. Now keep in mind it does have autofocus. It's very, very particular and it only works with touch focus as well as selection focus. If I were you and you're going to this camera and you plan on using it for filmmaking, I would recommend definitely getting a follow focus option uh, such as the one that comes with the DJI Ronin S. They don't have the focus motor built for it yet, so I'm still waiting on that. So for the time being, for my auto fo for my focusing capabilities, I basically just use the focus ring and the focus wheel to be able to adjust my focus with just this little fluid rolling wheel. Now it doesn't mean that they won't be having a continuous autofocus coming down the road with firmware updates. Um, I haven't heard any news on that. I'm not going to really plant too many seeds in that, but it is possible. Uh, they have been saying in the comments on the BNH forum that they will look into it. So there's no validity to that, but it's a possibility. It's out there. Also, another thing to keep in mind that the autofocus that is built into this camera, it only works with native lenses, meaning any lens that is uh, Panasonic, Lumix, or Olympus, uh, as long as it's a micro four thirds native lens, you will have the ability, and I think on certain models, to be able to have the autofocus electronically. Uh, anything that's adapted, like I have here, which is the Viltrox 0.71x adapter, uh, it, it adapts a Canon EF lens to it. Uh, it does have the electrical capabilities so that you can use the motor function autofocus on the wheel here, uh, because there is no manual focus with that lens but you won't have autofocus on your camera through digital control. It's not necessarily a bad thing, and I think for me, if I want to become a better filmmaker, really, that's one of the biggest things that you have to get better at is learning how to focus manually. And uh, if you look into the community like I have, you see that everybody is all about manual focus, and really, that's the way we should be doing it. So it's not that really much of a deal changer for me, especially when I do sit down videos like I do right here. The need for autofocus isn't very necessary. Uh, another thing to keep in mind that most people don't know about this camera um, when they first initially buy it, the battery on here is an LPE6 battery, which is actually a really good camera battery. Uh, I use, I have these uh, generic versions uh, that I'm trying out to see how well they work in here, um, but the stock one that comes with it works pretty well. Some people say they get about 45 minutes of battery life on this camera. Uh, I still haven't got that, uh, but I may just be doing something wrong, so I'm still trying to figure that out. Uh, but the battery life in these cameras isn't that great and for 45 minutes out of this battery it takes a very long time to charge. I would say three to four hours to charge one battery for me. Um, I, do have, I do have multiple chargers and batteries so I would recommend definitely when you pick up this camera don't just use the individual one that you have in your camera. Definitely consider at least picking up four to eight of these batteries just in case if you plan on using these in particular. Now there are other power options available for this camera. Um, the biggest one that a lot of people are talking about is they do have this waifu connector. Uh, not really a standard connector yet, but this is basically what it looks like. 
Uh, it comes from the package itself. There's no actual battery charger that comes with the camera. This is the power adapter that comes with the camera. You plug it into the side there and you have a secondary power supply controlling, uh, connected to your camera so that you can charge your battery as well as power your camera at the same time. So it's definitely good that they have a secondary power option. I did wanna let you guys know there is USB-C charging on this camera. However, and a lot of people may have gotten this misconstrued, it does not charge your camera uh, as it's turned on. So the only way that you can charge your battery through USB-C is if your camera is turned off. You can't power the camera with USB-C, you can only charge your batteries through USB-C. So I just wanted to inform you guys on that before anybody gets that confused. There's a lot of fine print around that and there's been a lot of confusion in the Facebook pages as well. Uh, the second option that a lot of people have been uh, talking about lately and the one that I actually chose to pick for myself uh, until the actual legit waifu adapter comes out to connect to this device is the dummy battery option. Uh, basically, this is just a replica uh, connector of the battery. It connects into the actual camera itself, looks just like the battery, except you have this connector to be able to connect to a external power source battery. This is a, a 6,000 milliamp hour power bank. Uh, it should last about two to four hours, I guess, depending on how I'm using it. Uh, it outputs at 12 volts from the power bank itself, but I have a, an electrical decoder dampener, which pretty much down powers that and, and it shrinks the voltage down to eight volts of power. So the battery power that comes out of this dummy battery matches the same power that comes out of this LPE6 battery. So that's highly important if you wanna keep your camera safe and stable. Um, so that's why I got that decoder as well as the dummy battery. So those are kind of the power options available right now. And I just wanted to show you guys those. Uh, a lot of people have been getting confused about that. Now I would recommend in the future when they do come out with just an individual 12 volt cable, um, the waifu cable, if it just comes out like this with this 12 volt and it plugs directly into this guy, you can just get one cable individually, no adapter or dampener and plug it directly into there while you have a live battery in there as well. So that's probably the best option that's gonna come out. I'm still waiting for it to come out though. I don't wanna cut any cables. I have seen people chop this cable up, but I'm not gonna do that because I need that charging cable. Another misconception that uh, people seem to get confused about this camera is that this camera is so much more complicated than DSLRs, and I actually disagree with that. Um, the menu options on this camera are fairly simple and it's really easy to learn, and not only that, but it's educational for me as a filmmaker to actually see these cinematography style menus where you can control uh, things like off color, your zebras as well, as well as your focus assist. There's so many cool things with this little cinema camera that you can use and help you to become a better videographer, cinematographer. And uh, it's definitely uh, been educational, but at the same time, it's really pleasing to be able to get my hands on something like this and uh, step my game up as a filmmaker in general. If you guys wanna look at the menu, there's a lot of other videos uh, regarding the menu. Uh, I would definitely recommend checking YouTube for those other videos. I actually put some links in the description below uh, of examples of some cool YouTubers that I've been watching uh, and just kind of give you guys what the menu layout looks like. Uh, the biggest, another thing that I would wanna mention is that this camera, uh, when I first got it, I expected some type of automation and there, are, there is some auto uh, capabilities as far as auto exposure. But I found that the best way to get the best quality out of your video and the most consistent video is to actually do everything just manually. Don't allow the camera to do the work for you. Um, you definitely want to control everything yourself because you as a human, uh, you can really see things with your eyes that the camera can't really understand as far as lighting and coloring. This camera can't do everything. It, it does have the ability to do so, but it won't do it as good as you, the camera videographer, can do. You have things like manual aperture, shutter angle, shutter speed. Shutter angle is the way in which on the cinema side, uh, they adjust shutter, whereas on the DSLR camera and video shooter side, we call it shutter speed. So that's something that you have to learn and I can't really explain it because I don't myself understand it, but I use it for some reason. The ISO, you have the ability to adjust the ISO manually as well. I usually keep it at 400 ISO or 3200 because those are the two native ISOs. And I would love to explain it to you, but I'm still learning about that myself. But I would definitely recommend to check out the videos in the link in the description below to learn more about the dynamic range and the native ISOs that they speak of. So there was an initial video by a lot of YouTubers who were talking about this camera because they initially talked about this camera as if it was gonna be the newest YouTube vlogger camera. Uh, one of the biggest things that they talked about was this little record button right here, uh, how you can flip the camera toward yourself and pretty much press that button and record. 
I don't think that's exactly what that was meant for and I don't want you guys to get this misconstrued. This camera is in no way, shape, or form a vlogging camera. If you're planning to get this camera for vlogging, you are going to be very disappointed because you have to control everything manually as far as focus, lighting, and all the other information that goes in this camera is pretty much controlled all manually. Not only that, you have to set the audio microphone jack inputs. So you have to make sure you set everything up precisely before you start even recording yourself. So I would not recommend this to any vloggers out there. If you're planning on doing some B-roll shots or using this as your A camera, like a sit down camera right here, definitely a great idea. If you plan on taking this out and putting it at your face, it's not going to happen. Just want to tell you guys now, don't do it. Uh, another thing that people, and it's really like an inside joke in my opinion, is this camera is n by no means pocket size. Uh, even compared to every other camera that has been on the uh, Ronin S, this thing is a beast on here. Uh, I've seen other cameras on here, but this thing is, uh, in all true honesty, super wide. I love the wideness of it. Not only that, because the 5 inch screen is amazing. And the ability to hold it and have all these controls and do things and settings and watch the video playback with HD 4K quality is just unimaginable. This camera, uh, the size of it is perfect, but I did want to mention to you guys, it is definitely not pocket sized. And if you're going to be coming from a DSLR like any Canon, uh, Sony, or a GH5, it's definitely not pocket compared to. So definitely... Uh, keep that in mind if you plan on doing this. Now, the construction, the body construction of this camera, I did want to mention it feels plasticky. A lot of people mention the plasticky feel of this camera, uh, but I did want to mention that this camera, uh, it's a mix between composite and carbon fiber composite. So there's some type of mix in there where it's actually a fairly durable camera and uh, there's a lot of technical jargon that goes on in there, but I did want to mention that it's not plastic, but it does have a very plasticky feel to it. So when you pick it up initially in stores and when you actually see it, it feels like it, but when you actually go out and shoot with it, you can definitely feel that this thing is quality built. I've used this thing for a couple shoots now and uh, yeah, has not let me down, has, does not have me worried at all and uh, definitely recommend it for a high quality video. Uh, so some of the things I have been seeing in the Facebook pages is uh, that some of these are arriving defective. I do wanna mention this because some of you or watching videos on here, ordering this, may not notice it until it's too late to uh, get the warranty replacement on it. There is uh, some of these cameras that are coming out with dead pixels, uh, blurry spots in the screen, and redness or tinted uh, LCD. So definitely keep that in mind when you're using your camera and trying it out for the first time. Uh, be very careful and be very cautious to notice these things so that if need be, you can send it back to Blackmagic Designs and get it returned as soon as possible. Uh, I do want to mention that Blackmagic actually has uh, a really good rep with customer service as far as returns goes or RMAs. So that's not really a bit, that much big of an issue to prove and show that your, your camera is defective. You just want to make sure you do it as soon as possible before your warranty runs out and uh, you don't lose the ability to do that and have to buy a new one for some odd reason or pay for repairs. So one of the biggest things uh, I do have to mention to you guys, for me coming from a DSLR YouTuber standpoint, uh, going into the Blackmagic Pocket 4K community, the cinematography community and the vlogger community is um, a 180 of difference. There's so many different uh, viewing angles and professional opinions that it's not as friendly as you would think it would be. So I did want to warn you guys, when you go into these certain communities, you want to be someone who educates themselves before asking stupid questions because you will be bashed for stupid questions. I am one of the people that tries to help and teach people and educate others, uh, but there are some out there who will attack you just for saying something out of normal. So I just wanted to mention that to you guys. Be very cautious and if that does happen to you, I apologize on behalf of that community and I hope that uh, if you do have any questions, you can completely 100% ask me on the comments below here or shoot me an email or a message anytime on Facebook or uh, email. Another thing I did want to mention about this camera is that the quality of this camera is so great and so amazing that it needs to use the maximum amount of space available on it. Now when I say that it's not necessarily a bad thing but I did want to recommend that you guys who are coming from DSLRs, uh, this guy shoots ProRes 4K 422 footage and it looks crisp. You can bake the LUT into it or you can add it in post, uh, but that 4K footage is so large 
that you literally have to have a hard drive connected to your camera for you to be able to record that video for long sessions. So I would highly recommend that you at least get a 256 gigabyte card, uh, UHS-2, CFast, or even a T5 Samsung hard drive USB-C that connects directly into the camera itself uh, to record your video. I would not recommend anything less than that. If you do have anything less than that and you're recording with it, you're gonna have to make a lot of trips to uh, your backups laptop or whatever to be able to transfer files so you can make space for more video. So definitely consider that. Uh, have spare US have spare SD cards, have a spare USB-C hard drive available, and have a spare CFast card. Highly recommended. Uh, but yeah, that's it for the storage space. So uh, yeah, that's it for today, guys. Uh, I definitely have more coming on information, things to know about this camera. But I did want to show you guys, share with you that information because that's something that I don't really know until I got the camera. And about two weeks after of research and scrounging and scrolling through Facebook pages, forums, internet browse links. And uh, I just want to see if I can save you guys some time. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys have any tips for anybody else, uh, definitely leave in the comments below. I would highly recommend you guys, uh, if you can, share your knowledge for all the Black Magic guys out there. Uh, I want to thank everybody again on the Facebook page and the forums for being so informative and so nice. Uh, and I did want to warn the others that, you know, some of the people aren't as nice as you guys. So thank you again, guys, Black Magic Pocket Community Key. This is uh, pretty cool. Uh, I still have my Canon camera. Don't worry, guys. This thing is shooting in 4K right now. I'm actually very excited to actually use the 4K for the first time because this thing, uh, the 4K is amazing. 4K, a ProRes uh, 422 or 4K lossless. It's just amazing. Well guys, thank you so much again for watching the channel. Uh, I hope this was informative and uh, I definitely want to say thank you again for considering. I definitely want to say thank you again for watching the video, even if it wasn't that informative for some of you. Uh, thanks again. And uh, definitely consider to like and subscribe if this video was helpful at all. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.